This is Friday, August 9th, 2013. We are in Natick, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morris Institute Library's continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan. Our cameraman is Dan McDermott of Natick Pegasus. We are privileged to have with us today John Patty. Welcome, John. Now, John, may I ask when you were born? 9, 17, 23. And where were you born? Uh, Grand Street, Framingham, Mass. And what town do you currently live in? Framingham, Mass. Your marital status? I'm, right now, I'm single, widowed. Mm -hmm. Do you have children? One, one son, Charles Patty. And grandchildren? None. <laughs> Tell us what Framingham was like growing up. Well, it was a nice town. Of course, the, the street that I lived on, the corner of Grant and Wilson, mm -hmm. Wilson Street had three automobiles on it. Three, there was uh, uh, Tom Kelly, Billy Heffernan, and Johnny Greco were the only three automobiles on Wilson mm -hmm. Street. And uh, now, the house that I live in, there ten, there's, there's a double-decker. Mm -hmm. Ten people were living in there, and there's nine cars. <laughs> just in the one house, wow. what, it, what the difference is in between the depression years and years to, to today. Mm -hmm. Now you're telling me you went to elementary school on Howe Street? I went, no, yes, yes. the elementary mm -hmm. school was on Howe Street, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you attended several schools going up yes. the grades? Yes, because mm -hmm. the grades were different. They only, like, they only had the first and second on Howe Street, mm -hmm. and they only had third, fourth, and fifth, no, third and fourth on Lincoln Street, mm -hmm. and the uh, fifth and sixth on Hastings Street, and then the uh, seventh, eighth, and ninth on the Lincoln Street, and then the high school for the rest. And the high school was the one on Union Ave? On Union Ave. It's a library now, I believe, isn't it? Uh, I thought it was the Danforth. Oh, Danforth, Danforth Library, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, or Danforth Museum? Oh, mu oh is it? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had pictures uh -huh. of, of the islands that I was on, and I get, I've already given them to the Museum mm -hmm. of Veterans in Framingham, oh, okay. I, not knowing that I was going to be interviewed <laughs> here. So what did you do after high school? I went to work in Cambridge, Massachusetts as a mechanic. Mm -hmm. And then I went to work in uh, uh, Quincy Naval Shipyard. No, 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 no. After that, I went to work, you know, where they were just having this big uh, fight over the, the bad drugs on, in Framingham? I think so, yeah. Yeah, across from, from uh, the Union House. Mm -hmm. Well, that used to be Angel's. They made uh, waterproof paper there. Mm -hmm. I went to work there. And then I went to Quincy sh Shipyards. Mm -hmm. And then the Army was going to grab me, so I went into the Navy. And that brought me right to here. Okay. Do you remember what happened uh, where you were on December 7th, 1941? Yes. yes, I was at the movie theater. And I come out of the movie theater, the, the St. George Theater in Framingham. It's now a bank. Mm -hmm. I, no, I don't know. It's a, I don't know if it's a bank or not. Yeah. Anyway, at, at four o'clock, the movie was over, and I come out, and Mo Sugarman was out there selling papers. He used to sell papers. The Japanese attacked at Pearl Harbor. That's where I was when it happened. Did you know where Pearl Harbor was? Never. No. Had no mm -hmm. idea. So you're saying uh, after about a year, the Army was about to grab you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. In fact, I have the papers there of uh -huh. the date, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, when the postcard come to report. Ah. Yeah. And so you decided on the Navy? The Navy. What made you decide on the Navy? Well, I didn't want to dig foxholes, even then as a kid. Mm -hmm. All right? I didn't want to be dirty, even as a kid. It's, it, it, in, in my house, everything was immaculate. My mm -hmm. mother was scrupulous when it came to stuff like that. And you just, mm -hmm. just, I just didn't want to, and I just didn't want to uh, dig holes. Okay. Dig so, so, but. Uh, so, uh, tell us about uh, joining the Navy. 
Well, like I say, when I went there at, at mm -hmm. uh, Fargo Building in Boston, I weighed 98 pounds. They didn't want to take me. They said, when we give you the sea bag with all your clothes and your bedding, it's going to weigh almost as much as you. How can you possibly <laughs> join the Navy? But anyway, uh, they let me eat two pounds of bananas on the, on the steps of the Fargo building, and then they passed me and let me go in without even putting me on the scale. <laughs> and, and then I believe it was only a, a four weeks training I believe, I'm not positive of that, but it was pretty close to four weeks training, and they shipped me to North Fork, Virginia, and then on to San Francisco. There I met a, I met a kid, just ironic, I met a kid by the name of Joe that came from New Jersey. And later on, about so, about six weeks later, he says, this isn't for me, he says, I'm getting out. Little did I realize this guy was in with the mafia. His folks were in with the mafia and, and stuff like that from New Jersey. Not knowing how closely related New Jersey and New York are in that respect, you know. That, I don't know whether you realize this or not, but they are. They're very, very close mm -hmm. when it comes to stuff like that. He says, I'm going to have my father get me out of here. And he did. Wow. There was a, a two weeks after we hit Ifani, he says, I'm on my way home. Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear from him again Never after that? Never heard from him again. Okay. Yeah. But uh, we did a couple of things together while we were in, in mm -hmm. San Francisco. Uh, I don't know if this is of interest, but mm -hmm. uh, we were walking in San Francisco and, and we saw this place and it was like a nightclub. We said, gee, let's go. Look mm -hmm. at all the pretty girls here, you know, and everything. And he says, yeah, let's go. So we go up and the name of the place was the Frolics. So we, go, we had to go up about 20, 30 steps to get up to it. Mm -hmm. Jesus, the girls, they were just beautiful, gorgeous girls. Come to find out it's a game. They were all girls. They were all men dressed as girls. <laughs> they could, he was a macho. He grabbed a hole of one and he had him, up, had him up over his head. He was going to throw him down the stairs. And I said, Jesus, Joe, don't. We'll end up in jail, you know? Put him down, put him down. So he did. He finally talked him into putting him down, and we left. So then. Mm. <laughs> Eye opening was, experience? Yes. Oh, God. You know, it's, it's just something that happened uh -huh. on the spur of the moment. But uh, thank God that he put him down. I'd probably still be in jail, for all mm -hmm. I know. But uh, he did let him go. And this was the same kid that I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Uh, he had a, a Victrola at the time, and when we went to the island of Ifari, he gave it to me with six records. And we got so sick of playing those records, one of the guys said to me, you know, Johnny, he said, if you ever play one of those records again, I'm going to come in there and smash the records over your head and, and uh, uh, crush the Victrola. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, anyway, I took, I took that, and mm -hmm. I didn't play it for a long time. Okay, so yeah. let's get uh, let's get back a little bit to Norfolk and San Francisco. I take it this was the first time you were away from Framingham. Oh sure, oh mm -hmm. sure. Furthest I'd ever been was Boston. Uh huh. Oh yeah. And what kind of training did you get? Was it basic training? All they gave us, oh, they it basic training. They just kept us there long enough mm -hmm. to give us injections of where you were going. Now, they knew I already had me programmed for the South Pacific, so naturally mm -hmm. I was getting all the, the serum for different, uh, for malaria and all the, all the things that went uh, with, with the islands, mm -hmm. which they, they gave me. That's, that's about all they did. Yeah. I think one time they took us out and marched us that mm -hmm. I can remember. Mm -hmm. The rest of the time it was nothing. They would stab you in one arm, stab you in the other arm, and go ahead, stab, stab. Mm -hmm. Nothing but uh, injections. Okay. And when you were in San Francisco, did you receive any further training? Nothing. Or Absolutely you, you nothing. You were just waiting got on to a get... Troop ship, mm -hmm. Got on a troop ship, and we went to, uh, we went to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Just stayed one day, never left the ship, <coughs> and left there and went to Numea, New Caledonia. When we were getting off the ship, I heard, hey, sailor, come here. No, me, I had that scent, that, uh -huh. that, uh, that uh, uh, sea bag on my shoulder. I wasn't about to put it down. You put mm -hmm. it down, you get it dirty, you have to wash it. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. so anyway, 
uh, uh, the, the kid in front of me, his name was Pascalupi, he come from Virginia. And he says, me? He says, no, he says, the sailor in front of you. That was me. Mm -hmm. So I went over there and he says, did you ever run a bulldozer? I says, no. He says, well, you're going to learn now. He says, put the sea bag down. I says, no, it'll get dirty. He says, don't worry about it. He says, now, he says, you're in the Navy. They'll be taking that away from you, which they did. Mm -hmm. So there he taught me, and for seven days I ran a bulldozer. <laughs> Jesus. Just, just it was this, it, the, the guy says, this is the, this, you do this, 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 this. I mm -hmm. says, okay. He says, you know how to do that now? And I says, yes. He says, what I just told you, all this stuff, you know how to do? And I says, yes. He says, all right, go ahead. He says, let me show you. Go ahead and do it. So I did it. Mm -hmm. He says, I don't believe you never ran a bulldozer. Just like that. He says, I just don't believe you. So for seven days, I ran. In fact, the day I left, he says, and I still don't believe that you never ran a bulldozer. So that's the seven days later when they put us back mm -hmm. on the ship and we stopped at Guadalcanal. How do I remember Guadalcanal? There was a ship beach there, a, a Liberty ship that was already rusting, and it was on the beach. But we only stayed there three hours or two hours. I don't know what we dropped off or what we took on. And then we went to Ifadi. There, there I was on the Regal, USS Regal, our warm. There, and they said to us, we don't have room for you on the ship, you're gonna to have to live on shore. Mm -hmm. So they put us on, on the shore, and uh, that's where we were for I think a year and a half or a mm -hmm. little better. Numbers, uh, you know, the uh, time just goes on. When the process while we were there, the, the destroyers used to go out. And of course, the destroyers were getting the blunt of all the fighting. Mm -hmm. So while I was there, what, it happened very nonchalantly. I was a coxswain. Being a motor machinist mate, you had to do double duty. You had to run a boat because we were so short-handed. Mm -hmm. And you also had to be a boat. When the, when the fleet was out, you would fix boats, fix the engines. Mm -hmm. When the fleet was in, you would run the boats. That's mm -hmm. double duty. So I'm there one day, and I had they put me with the six destroyers. <clears throat> and they were coming off. The officers were coming off. And I noticed three three from one ship, three from another ship, three from mm -hmm. another ship, and then two, then three and three. So when, when the, the OD says, all right, he says, take, a, you're all set. And I says, wait a minute, something is wrong here. Now me, I was, they're looking, I got all these officers on there, plus the OD that's an officer. And he, I, and he says, what? I says, well, I says, six threes are 18, three from each slip, ship. I only got 17 on here. Mm -hmm. So, the, oh my God, there was one officer that, it, that, that didn't come from one of the destroyers. Well, he was coming. They sent word. This guy, he wasn't running, he wasn't walking, he was flying to get into the boat. Because mm -hmm. they can't make mistakes on destroyers. There's only 220 people on a, uh, on a destroyer. Mm -hmm. And there, there isn't room for mistakes. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Well, when they were getting off, the, the officer come over to me and he says, you don't realize what I owe you for, for, for uh, making sure that I was on that boat. He says, you have no idea what uh, the, the trouble you kept me out of, mm -hmm. see? <laughs> so everything was fine. One day I'm, I'm, we're on land and he, he come by and he says, hey, Patty, how you doing? I says, good, good. He says, you know, he says, I still owe you a lot. I says, okay. I says, you, but, and then the officer, that officer that I had, he was no good, God. I had the 12 to 4 watch all mm -hmm. the time that I was there, in a, a year and a half, every single day. And I had all the special runs. Mm -hmm. He just, we just hated one another to the extent that, boy, mm -hmm. Boy, bad, bad. You were saying 12 to 4, was that 12 noon to 4? No, no, 12? 12 midnight to 4 in the morning. Ooh. I had that for every single seven days a week for all the length of time that he was there. Yeah. In fact, at one time it got so bad that the chief <coughs> in our machine shop, he put a, a, a cot in the back of the machine shop. He says, Patty, anytime you're you're tired, you go sleep in there. He says, I'll stand watch for you. Mm. This, you know, and I, I never did. I never took, mm -hmm. 
I never took it. One night, one night, I had the 12th to 4 and a Jeep stopped and he says, are you guarding that over there? And I says, no. He says, do you mind if I go over there and get some canned stuff? I says, go ahead, I don't care. I says, I got nothing to do with it. I says, in fact, if anybody comes, I'll light a cigarette so that you'll know that uh, to be careful. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so when, when he was, uh, he got some canned goods and he stopped again. He says, you want some? And I says, no, what do I want with that stuff? He says, take a couple of cases. I should have never did. Mm -hmm. I put them there and the lieutenant, or the, the, the lieutenant saw him the next morning. He says, where'd they come from? I'm going to put them on report wherever they come from. I wasn't going to tell him the guy gave them to me. So they were there. I left mm -hmm. them there for, oh, they were there about a month, a month and a half. So one day, <laughs> I had done a favor for a chief on the Nevada. Mm -hmm. So I says, hey, chief. Uh, can you get me some uh, saltine crackers? And he says, sure, Patty. He said, Cause I really helped him out of a good jam, you know. And he says, uh, sure. So he says, come on. He, says, he took me over to the chief steward and they give me a, a full bag of, of uh, saltines. Mm. And what the two cases that the guy had given me, one was uh, 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 stewed tomatoes and the other one was uh, applesauce. <laughs> so I took a crate that day when I got the, the uh, cookies, the, the saltines, mm -hmm. and I put a, a, a towel on there and I put salt, pepper, uh, uh, canteens, and uh, knives, forks, spoons, and I'm sitting there and I opened up a, a can of uh, stewed tomatoes and before you know it, there must have been 15 of us there eating <laughs> stewed tomatoes and applesauce. We went through four gallons of stewed tomatoes and two gallons of applesauce. Can you imagine? Oh. This is, you can't realize the boredom of life on, on, on the islands like this with nothing to do. We did absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. One time, another time there was the Trafalgar or the Swanee, it was one of the two aircraft carriers mm -hmm. and, the, and the, uh, they assigned me, the, the, the major of, of one of the Marines to, to do a, uh, a landing on an island. You know, they were Marines, but when you're, on, when you're on an aircraft carrier, your primary duty is guard duty. That's it, guard duty. Mm -hmm. He wanted them to, to, to uh, uh, do practice runs uh, invading an island. So they got on the boat, there was 20 on each boat, three boats. <clears throat> and I noticed that the Major come in my boat, the boat that I was on. And we went over to another island. The waves were huge. My God, they were big, big waves. And uh, I said to him, I says, you know, I says, the waves are big. He says, do you think you can make the landing? And I says, oh, yeah, I know I can make the landing. And uh, we started in, and when I got on top there, I saw that it was tough, so I put my boat in reverse and was full in reverse. The other two boats had full forward. I says, oh, my God, they're going to broach. They're going to broach. They're going to beach. That's the end of them boats. And, and I said it out loud. You know, and, and sure enough, I made a perfect landing, and the other two boats landed mm -hmm. up on the beach. Mm -hmm. Now, thankfully, the, the, the tide was coming in. So I says, don't, don't open the ramp. I says, I'm going to back out. I'm going to pull them off the beach one at a time. So sure enough, it took three waves to pull one of the first one off and only two the second one because the tide was still coming in. Mm -hmm. So when I turned one, when I brought one out, I says, throw your anchor over. He says, the water's too deep, but I says, still the anchor will act as a, as a drag. So sure enough, uh, by the time I pulled the second boat off, I went and I says, let that one go and I'll go grab the first boat we let and the other one will drift towards us, see? And, and the, the major is looking at me, see? He's not, not saying a, a word, not one word. And that's unusual. Jesus, you know, mm -hmm. you figured that he's being a major, he'd want to take charge right away. So, sure enough, I got the three boats, the three of us, and I used mine as the power and mm -hmm. took the other two boats. I had one, the stern tied to the middle and the middle tied to the bow, so that mm -hmm. I was yeah. using, mm -hmm. I was using the power and I had three, three people that could steer, which would give me, 
give me the, uh, the steerage that I needed. So once everything was settled, the Major come up to me and he says, you want to know something, sailor? No, Perry, the lead coxswain, had come over into my boat and he says, I'll take over now. And the Major looked at me and he says, what boat were you assigned to? And he says, that one. He says, then get out of this boat and go into your own boat. And, and, and Perry said to him, he says, I'm the lead coxswain. I said to him, yes, Major, he's the lead coxswain. He says, you, shut your mouth. Mm -hmm. He says, and you, if you don't get out of this boat now, I'm going to have my Marines arrest you right here for, for direct disobedience of order. This is what he said to him. I said, what? And he says, and you shut up. Just like that. All right? So once the Perry got out of the boat, he looked him over to me and he says, Patty, he says, I would have never, never would I have ever put you on the port after what you just did for me. He says, can you imagine me going back to the ship with just 20 men after I took 60 off and tell them that they marooned on an island? Mm -hmm. He says, do you realize the trouble that I got? you took me out mm -hmm. of? So anyway, I brought him back. Mm -hmm. Two, three days later, I'm walking to go to work to go to, a, to another, another job. And the, and the dispatcher says, hey, Patty, what? He says, don't go there. Go over to the... Go over to the aircraft carrier. They just called that they want you over there. Who comes off but the major? He says to me, did you tell the lieutenant what happened? And I said, no. He says, let me tell you. He says, when I come up there and told him I wanted the, the boats, he told me, you go in that boat where Patty is. He says, and if you call him Cox, and he's going to tell you, no, I'm not. I'm a motor machinist made second class. He says, but don't pay any attention to him because he's the best Cox and I have. These are words that he told me, all right? He says, he's the best coxswain I had. Mm -hmm. He says, and you know, he was right. He says, I never in my life saw anybody, saw a situation that was developing in front of him and already had the solution to the problem solved mm -hmm. and, and to get it over with. Just as simple as that. He says, now, he says, what did your lieutenant say? I says, I never told him anything. We didn't tell him anything. You take me over there, he says. You take me. I said, no, you're going to get me in trouble. He doesn't like me. He'll say it was my fault that this happened, which he would have, mm -hmm. see. So he says, okay. He says, Patty, he says, do you trust me? Mm -hmm. And I said, yes. He says, then take me over there. He says, I promise you, I make you a promise that I won't say a thing that's going to be harmful to you. I says, oh, boy. I says, mm -hmm. you don't realize the trouble you're going to get me in. Mm -hmm. So he says, take me over there, please. He says, I'm not going to force you, I'm asking you. So I took him over there, and for 30 minutes he talked to him. You know, when, when he got through, the lieutenant says, if I ever catch you sending Patty to that ship again, to, to that major, he says to the dispatcher, he says, you're going to be on report for direct disobedience of order. That's how much he hated me. Mm -hmm. So what else? The next thing was coming home. Oh, there was other things that happened to me on that yeah. with that guy. Oh, then uh, when, when Mr. McGowan come over, nice, nice officer. Jesus, what a great man. Mm -hmm. We become good friends, him and I. He, we, he says, <laughs> I can just see him now. We're standing there, he's taking muster. Mm -hmm. And he says, all right, he says, you guys did a super great job. First, the lieutenant left. He says, I'm proud to be able to be here with you. And they all went up there and shook his hand. Me, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I gave him, you know, today they give him the finger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me, I gave him the old Italian salute from the oh, elbow yeah. out mm -hmm. years ago. That's, and, and the chief come over after, he says, I'm so proud of you for doing that. He says, and not going up there and shaking his hand. He says, you know, he says, I was real, real proud of you. So anyway, McGowan come up, took the muster, and then he says, I can't say anything because the lieutenant told me what a great job you all have done here. And then he says, that'll be all. He says, continue the way you're at. And then he turned and he started, wait a minute, he says, hold it right there. Who is Patty? Jesus. Uh-oh. <laughs> I says, I didn't answer him. Mm -hmm. I didn't answer him. He says, all right. He says, I know you're here. He says, now who is Patty? Finally, I says, I'm Patty. He says, well, why didn't you answer me? I says, I'll tell you why I didn't answer you. And I says, there's, there's 15 of us here. Why did you say who's Patty? Why did you say who's Tobias? Who's Rayback? Who's Gossett? Who's Bill? 
I said, who's Pascalupi? Why did you say who's Patty? He said, because the lieutenant told me all about you. I says, I'm cooked. Mm -hmm. I'm cooked. I says, here we go again. The same thing all over again. So it's four o'clock at night, and the chief, the, 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 I goes over to look at the roster to see if I was on the 12th to 4 again, you know, the midnight watch. My name wasn't on there. So I look at the dispatcher and I says, hey, Pullen, why is it my name on there? Very arrogant, like he says, do you see it on there? And he had his feet up on his desk. He says, do you see it on there? And I says, no. He said, well, then it isn't on there, is it? Mm -hmm. So I'm tapping there with my hand, and I says, pulling. I said, listen to me very carefully. I says, I'm going to ask you the same question again. All right, the same question again. Now, if you don't come up with an answer, I'm going to come in there, pulling. I'm going to hurt you, and I'm going to hurt you badly. All right? This is when I found out that there were different shades of white. Mm -hmm. He was going white, 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 and whiter, because he knew I would do it. See? And he says, well, he says, the Mr. McGowan come in and told me not to give you any duties whatsoever. None. Absolutely no duties whatsoever. And I says, oh, from being, he's going to put me in the brig. He's going to show me as an example right away that he's the boss of this outfit, right? Mm -hmm. right. So me, I run to the chief. Chief, what is wrong? What is, what is he going to do to me? Whoa, 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 the chief was my friend, Jesus. He was like a father to me. Whoa, he says, what is, what, what, slow down. I says, he took me off all duties. I got no duties. Oh, he says, is that what he did? And I says, what are you talking about, chief? He says, listen to me. He says, uh, when we had muster this morning, I come back after what happened there on him, who's Patty. He says, I sat on the edge of my bed. And he says, they've got to stop beating on this kid. They've got to stop beating on him. He says, I don't know how he's taken this punishment all these months. And now the new one is here, and he's going to continue it. He says, so he says, I'm going to go and tell him. And I don't care if they break me from chief petty office to, to apprentice seaman. He says, they're going to stop beating on this kid. So he says, we went in. I went in there, tapped on the door. He says, and I went in and sat down. These are words that he's talk, talking to me now. And he says, I sat there, we talked for over two hours, and I told him all the things that the, the lieutenant did to you, and how mean he was to you, and what he did to you. He says, and he said, he, the first thing he said was, when a, the first day we were there, this is how it all started, we had a fix, a, a, like a waterfront, so that we could bring our boats in. Mm -hmm. And there was a coral snake swimming there. So he says to me, the lieutenant says, go ahead in. I says, no, look, there's a coral snake there. He'll bite me and kill you. He says, the snake won't kill you. He says, and he won't bite you. I says, how do you know? Can you talk to snakes? That was it. Oh, dear. <laughs> that was it. That was it. It ruined me. It ruined me for all the length of time he was there. But anyway, so the the the... The ensign, this was McGowan, mm -hmm. when he told him, he says, he looked at me, the, he looked at the chief and he says, did anybody else see the snake? He says, yeah, we all were watching the snake. And he says, did anybody else see anything? He says, no, just Patty. Right? And he says, he never said another word until we came to, what had happened was, <laughs> Jesus, he seems starting to come back to me. He says, we had got a refrigeration unit and it was on the truck. Now, they had asked him, does anybody here know how to run a crane? He says, no. So Pascalupi had said to him, hey, he says, the Patty, Patty was running a bulldozer on New Mia, New Caledonia, heavy equipment. He must know how to run a crane. What the hell do I know about a crane? The, I was out, at, I was out at, a, at, a, at a ship working. They sent the boat out to get me. And in the meantime, he says, if you ever come back to this base again without gas in your, in your boat, I'm putting you on report. So I said to the guy that was going to relieve me, what did he say to you? He says, he just told me to come and relieve you. Nothing else? And he says, Patty, for God's sakes. He says, did he say anything else? I've got to know exactly what he says. Because if I went back with no gas in the boat, I was going to be on report. Mm -hmm. So I left there and went and gassed up. Then I went <laughs> back to the base. He was mm -hmm. mad. 
But he couldn't get mad because he wanted me to do something different and special. All I had to do was say, no, I don't know how to. So he says, go up and run that crane. Can you run the crane? I says, I don't think so. I don't know. I never run one. He said, did you run heavy equipment on Numia? I said, yeah. He says, get up there and see if you can run it. So he didn't know that I wanted to go up there in the worst way. Mm -hmm. I'm there and I got it started and I got it to, All of a sudden, I felt, I, I got a hold of the lever that showed the, the, uh, the, the, the cable go out. Mm -hmm. And then I moved it the other way and I said, well, he says, that's it. Lift it, lower it. That's all I have to worry about, right? So he says, I says, okay, I can run it. He says, what? I says, yeah, he says, I can run it. So he took it. And I said, what do you want to do? He says, I want to take the reefer off of the truck and put it over here. I said, well, move the truck to where you want it. And I'll lift it, pull the truck out. No, he says, gee, I don't want the truck there. I want the... I said, whoa, it's going on the ground. Move the truck over. I'll lift it, pull the truck out, and I'll lower it. That's all. I says, that's all you want me to do? He says, yeah. Oh, sure enough, we did it. We took it all and... and as soon as they did, I moved the truck, and I, and I, I got off the, uh, off the crane, and I went over and I'm, everything was outside. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had three three oil drums we used to fill in the morning with water, and the heat would warm them, and that's where we showered, right out there in, mm -hmm. in the open. And, that, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, it, uh, I'm there taking a shower, and, he, and I could hear him, because it was close. It was, you know, it was, Hop, skip, and a jumper. And where's Patty? Where's Patty? What the hell does he want me now for? I'm going. And I'm down there showering. He says, down there showering. He says, go get him. Go get him. So up there, I wrap a towel around me. I shouldn't have wrapped. I should have walked up there naked. The hell was... <laughs> well, everything was wide open. There, there was no mm -hmm. modesty then. Mm -hmm. None. And uh, sure enough, he started to holler at me. I says, hey. You told me I could leave. You get away from me, he says. You get away from me. I don't want to see you. You get out of here. That's what I says, I turned around and I walked away. But, oh, God. Oh, God, what are you? Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, that was then. And then, of course, I got on the ship. Mm -hmm. and that, was a, that was an experience. Okay, so you just spent 18 months mm -hmm. on the island. Uh, first of all, uh, did you follow the, uh, the news of the war? Did you... Did you have like stars? We were and stars? in it. I, yeah. I didn't follow it. I just mm -hmm. from what the guys when they would, when the ships would go out and bombard an island, mm -hmm. we come back. I'd ask them what islands did you hit, you know, and uh, they would say Peleliu, Tarawa, mm -hmm. uh, 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 Guadalcanal, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Tulagi. Right. Oh God, they were they were, well, there were seventy five D days, like I say in mm -hmm. in uh, in the Pacific. There was only one in Europe. Mm -hmm. But there were 75 different ones, like Guam, Saipan, Tinian, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, all of those were all these different uh, islands that they went, that, that we did. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I was right there, not in them, right. until, until Okinawa was the only combat one mm -hmm. that I was in, okay, which was enough. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you frankly, it was enough. And uh, we pulled in, pulled in right alongside of an LC. An, an LST, an LST, and it had uh, banks of, of rockets on it. And uh, they, they, while we were landing, now that's something I can't remember whether we had troops, two tanks, or four trucks. I see, I was, mm -hmm. I, I was on a LCM, which is a 50 foot lighter. And uh, uh, we landed. And I took, and of course, me, I was always nosy as could be. I got off the boat, and I'm walking around on the beach as though nothing's happening. And all these, the rockets are going like crazy. And every now and then, you'd see three streaks coming over with a battleship. Somebody called in for a strike. And the battleships could be 18, 20 miles out at sea. You know, they'd shoot three missiles or three, three uh, shells. They could shoot them 18 to 22 miles. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. One ton each, these shells were. Can you imagine that, mm -hmm. going that distance? And I was talking to some Marines, and they said that if you were underneath these shells when they were coming overhead, it used to suck all the air up out from the, from the ground, going overhead over you. Uh -huh. you know? This I couldn't know because it didn't happen to me, but the Marines were telling me this. And uh, while we were there, 
Naha, that was the capital. That's right where we were. And uh, I got off the beach. I'm walking around on the beach. And uh, I says, what's that building? That's the only building there that was up. He, somebody says, it's a bank. I says, oh, come on. He says, yeah. I says, they said it was a bank. So I says, I'm going over there and see. I know our next shot is going to be Japan. Let me see if there's any money running around or blown mm -hmm. up. I says, I can yen. I took about 10 or 15 steps. It was about from here to the wall over there. Right. Okay. And a Marine looked at me and says, Sailor, where are you going? I says, they tell me that's a bank. I'm going to see if there's any money laying around. He says, the Japs are on the other side. It, quote, unquote. He says, you get your ass shot off. Mm -hmm. Just like that. I made a U-turn. When, when I made the U-turn, I heard that the, the beach master screaming bloody murder. What's the matter? What's the matter? He says, the Jeep, a brand new Jeep, it won't run, it needs a fuel pump. I says, how can it need a fuel pump? It's a brand new Jeep. So I said, push it back onto the, push it back on the LCM. We'll take it back to the ship, fix it, and bring it back ashore. Well, we did, and the coxswain of the boat, oh my God, what a nut. He, had a, he was a thickhead. He says, you get it off my boat. I says, are you out of your mind? Here's the officer who wants to throw this brand new Jeep in the ocean. You don't want it in the, in the boat. We'll take it back, fix it, and bring it back ashore. You get it off my boat. I says, I'm not getting it off the boat. I told him uh, first to the beach master, it, uh, have a couple of three Marines give me a lift to push it on. Sure enough, he says, go ahead, do it. So he did. I'm standing there, and I says, what are you going to do with that motor scooter? He says, you want it? I says, yeah. He says, take it. <laughs> so, I, so I put the motor scooter on there. We get back, we got two-thirds of the way almost to the ship, and they, the, the, oh no, oh no, it was that night, yeah, that night we had an air raid, and there, there, there were so many, there was 1,300 ships there. There was, everybody was shooting up, they were all shooting. All of a sudden we get through over the loudspeaker from someplace going, all ships in the harbor cease firing. All ships in the harbor cease firing. All personnel topside, take cover, take cover. What's going on? My damage control was right next to the five-inch gun. So I took two steps and I was inside the machine shop where my damage control was. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden I hear this stuff falling down. It was so much akak coming down, it was falling down on top of us. And it, that, that's, when you, that's what they're talking about, friendly fire. Friendly fire coming down on top of us. And the next morning, this was at about 11 o'clock at night, the next morning you could see the ship where all these chunks of metal had fallen down. Well, I could, Christ, you could get really hurt. So, well, anyway, that, was, that happened that, the night mm -hmm. before. So we're, we're coming back, and uh, uh, over the loudspeaker, the chief boatswain mate is going, LCM from the one from the 174 Gerald, come alongside on the double, on the double. We're taking up, we're, we're, take, we're getting underway. We'll leave you here. We're, and, the, and the coxswain is getting mad as hell because now we got the Jeep. Mm. And we got the, what are we going to do with you? I says, what is the difference whether we throw this Jeep in the ocean out here in the harbor or are they going to throw it in the ocean on right off the beach? Tell me what the difference is. Can you see any difference of where we throw this brand new Jeep in the water? Well, he says, I'm putting you on the board. I says, I don't care what you do. Because me and the first lieutenant of the board ship, were, we were buddy buddies. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 it, 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 we got alongside, and it was just like in the movies, honestly, when I think back. We, we got alongside, we got hooked on, and just as we cleared the water, they cleared the anchor and the first turn of the screw, and we were underway. We were underway and they're pulling the boat up out of the water and putting it in the berth. The coxswain of the boat goes over to his chief, the chief boats and mm -hmm. mate, and he's telling what happened. He says, well, we're going to put him on report. So the, my chief went over to him and says, you're going to put who on report? He says, we're putting Patty on report. He says, you're going to put, he says, they'll never get by the first lieutenant. He says, you notice how many times a week the first lieutenant comes down from the bridge to talk not to you, not to me. He says, he comes here to talk to Patty. He says, you'll never get by him. Just like that. So, well, what else? <laughs> Finally, it happens that when we're out at sea for one hour, 
the captain used to make a fast inspection of the ship to see if it was seaworthy and everything was battened down. And he comes by and he spots the jeep. He says to the first lieutenant, what happened here? He says, well, they were going to, they were going to throw it in the ocean because it needs a fuel pump. He says, and Patty talked him into putting it on here. He says, and we're going to see what's wrong and we're going to bring it back ashore. He says, well, did you fix it? Yeah, he says, it was a crimp fuel line from when they lifted it. If we spliced in a new line, it runs perfect. Then he looked and he says, what's this? He says, don't tell me. Just like this. I'm, I'm standing, he's about from here to you, away from me. Don't tell me, he says, Patty. He says, yeah. He said, we're going to throw it in the ocean. The, the, the beach master told him he could take it. Never said another word, he took off. Mm -hmm. Well, what had happened was, when we first got on the ship in San Francisco, picked up the USS Gerald, we went up to Seattle, Washington, and, and uh, Seat no, uh, Seattle, uh, Seattle, Washington, and uh, what the hell was Oregon, Salem, Oregon. Mm -hmm. And then we went back, and the captain says, we're going to have us a, uh, we're going to have us a uh, ship's dance before, but we're leaving at 0600 tomorrow morning to go to the South Pacific back end of the war. We're going to have us a ship's dance. So we go to the ship's dance. This is how I got in friendly with the lieutenant. We got into the ship's dance and geez, it was dull. Nothing was happening. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to stir up a little trouble to the guys that were sitting with me. And the guy says, yeah, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to go dance with the captain's wife. Ah, come on, you're good to hell, you're crazy. And already they're laughing and joking. I said, you see, it didn't take much to get you motivated into something. Mm -hmm. So they were there. All of a sudden, you're going to go up or not? Yeah. So don't I go up there? And I says, right to the captain. I says, Captain, I says, uh, I'd like permission to ask your wife if she cared to dance. He looked at me and I said, permission granted. Just like that, you know. And the, the officer, the exec, and the first lieutenant were there. So I danced with them. We talked, you know, and everything. So we went and sat down. All of a sudden, we were sitting there for a few minutes. The lieutenant is coming over. And the guy says, uh oh, you must have done something because the lieutenant's coming over. So he come over and I says, he says, Patty, and he says, yeah. He says, Mrs. Perry would like to know if she could have another dance. <laughs> so I said, sure. So I said, just like this, I says, Go up and tell the band to play a waltz. Mm -hmm. And then I jumped up. I says, me ordering the first lieutenant of the ship to go up. And I jumped up. I says, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that the way it come out. So I says, what I, what I was trying to say was that I would have a better chance of, of the band leader giving us the waltz if a lieutenant went up rather than a, a, a little seaman mm -hmm. or a, a motor machinist made first class, you know. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, he says, sure, I'll do that. So I jumped up and I said, I'm coming with you. He says, you don't have to. I says, please, let me come with you. And we did. So they played it. And it was the, uh, the, made the last waltz uh, uh, last forever was, the, was the, the thing. She was good. Now, back in the big band era, when you were a decent dancer, they gave you one corner of the, one corner of the dance floor. And if you were good, they give you half. And if you were real good, you got the whole dance floor. Well, we had the whole dance mm. floor. Believe me, the mm -hmm. whole dance floor. When, and at the end, the, the last core, if you were good, they would repeat the last stanza. They did it once, they did it twice, they did it three times <laughs> wow. before they stopped. Mm -hmm. In fact, when they stopped, we got a standing ovation, including the band. Mm -hmm. Including the band gave us a standing ovation. Mm -hmm. So, it, I brought her back, and she was going, Mr. Patty, thank you ever so much. Oh, thank, oh we, while we were dancing, she was going, I, I says, what are you saying? What's wrong? Nothing, nothing, nothing. And again, and I, the third time, I, I finally found out when she, she was going to the band, please don't stop. Please don't stop. <laughs> so, I said, the band leader come over. He says, who are you? This is exactly what he says. Who are you? How come I've never heard of you before? I says, what? I says, I've never been around. I said, I just come back from the Pacific after two years. Mm -hmm. I says, and he says, Jesus. He says, we've played to many, many dance halls. He says, you are the best I've ever seen. Wow. Just from there. And two, two guys, two of the musicians come over and, and, 
and said that to us. But the mm -hmm. rest of them didn't come. There, was, there must have been 18, but mm -hmm. only two of the musicians and him. So anyway, out to the Pacific, mm -hmm. no mail for two months. And then when we, when we got caught up with mail at Zamboanga, and we were on the international dateline, Jesus, all this stuff is coming back. On mm -hmm. We were on the international dateline and the equator. And when we would, when we would zig, we'd be Tuesday. When we would zag, we'd go back into Wednesday. We were going Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, you know, zigzagging. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the equator, that's when we got the, uh, uh, what the hell is it, Davy Jones's locker, uh, Ancient Order of the Deep or something mm -hmm. like that. They, well, I got that. I have that in here, mm -hmm. too. But, uh, and uh, I got back, I, I used to read. Oh, God. I read every book in the library. Every day, and I, and I ran, my pre preferences were historical novels. Mm -hmm. I read all of Pearl Buck. I read all of uh, Hemingway's, uh, 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 Steinbeck, uh, Jack London. Erskine Caldwell, mm -hmm. all of these, this, they, these were the big, the big authors of the day. Mm -hmm. And one day, I went up there and the chief come up to me, he says, Patty, he says, the first lieutenant was down here. I says, yeah. He says, well, he just was walking around as though he wanted to see something. And I said, well, why don't you ask him? He says, yeah, I'm going to go up to the first lieutenant and say, chief, for Christ's sake, I says, he's a human being. Just go up and say, Lieutenant, can I help you? What, is that going to hurt you? Is he going to say something to you? So sure enough, the next day, he says, uh, uh, Chief, uh, uh, Lieutenant, he says, you look, you're looking for something. Can I help you? He says, yeah, where's Patty? Mm -hmm. Oh, he says, it's 11 o'clock. He, he goes on the port side, uh, the starboard side of the ship at, and uh, reads at 11 o'clock, and then he comes back here at 2 he goes, you know, for, uh, goes for lunch and then he comes back at two. Oh, well, the next day I'm there reading, and I'll tell you the book I was reading. I was reading Forever Amber. Whoops. Because I had gone through all of the others, and the, the librarian says to me, this book is, is, is a romantic novel. I said, mm -hmm. God, it was. She was an evil girl. Mm -hmm. My God, was she. Did you read it? You... Not the movie. I've seen the movie. Oh, did you? Yeah. She was an evil. I said, but there's there's three chapters in there that he described, the uh, the the plague, mm -hmm. that that killed all of uh, about fifty percent of all the Europeans that come over on Marco Polo's mm -hmm. ship from China, that, uh, and I says, God, I says, uh, uh, I uh, I was reading that. So I'm sitting there. And you know, peripheral vision, vision mm -hmm. I spot the captain of the ship. Now, the mm -hmm. captain of the ship never, never walks alone. He always has two or three officers with him. But he was walking alone. So he came over and he stopped and he says, hi, Patty. I says, good morning, Captain. He wanted to talk. You know, I, I jumped up. I stood at attention. And I says, uh, he says, good morning, Patty. I mm -hmm. says, hey, good morning, Captain. What the hell? You want to talk to me? He said, geez, it's a beautiful day. And I says, God, it was. It was a gorgeous day. The, 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 swir the swirls of the ship was going beautiful. Mm -hmm. And there was a school of porpoises. There was a school of porpoises. When we would zig, they would zig, you know? And, mm -hmm. and he was explaining to me at the time, I didn't know a thing about uh, uh, them throwing out a, a, a beat. And, you know, and it would come back to them and they'd know what direction they were going in. Mm -hmm. I, uh, sauna. Sauna, right. see, mm -hmm. a sauna, yeah. And he was explaining to me how this all worked. This, you know, and then uh, he says, what are you reading? <laughs> mm -hmm. I said, yeah. I started to laugh. I said, you can't believe it. I said, but I've gone through all of the books and I explained to him all the authors and so forth. And he, the librarian says, read this one because of the three chapters describing the plague that hit Europe. He says, you know, and he says, geez, I'm going to have to read that. Mm -hmm. And I says, yeah. I says, I'll have the librarian save it for you. <laughs> so anyway, that he never spoke to me again until we, we come to the, oh, as he was leaving, he says, and Mrs. Perry says hello too. Mm -hmm. Now it come to me why he was, why the lieutenant was wanting to know where I was at. 
he had received the mail too, and Mrs. Perry had said, say hello to John, <laughs> John, you know? It's, it's ironic that mm. uh, the way it went. But this, uh -huh. this is how, uh, you know, he, 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 and even then, uh, when, he, when, uh, when, he, when I had the Jeep on there and he said that and about the other, uh, I was saying to him, I never left, the, never left the ship, the Jeep, until we hit San Francisco. The Jeep stayed with us for mm -hmm. six months. On there, never, never put ashore. Oh dear! I got the, uh, we got that running. I got the mo the motor scooter running. We hit San Francisco. What well, this was after we were in, after the, uh, 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 brought the troops in, the Marines. Mm -hmm. The Marines we brought in, they gave us port and starboard liberty, and the Marines we brought in to Nagoya, Japan. They made them uh, MPs. They made them MPs, so they put out of bounds all the different things in there. That uh, on there, there was nothing there anyway. It was all blown up. My God, mm -hmm. it was complete devastation. I never see anything like it. You talk about precision bombing. They cleaned out like one side of the street. One side of the street, there wasn't a shingle off the roof. On the other side, there wasn't. A, there was nothing, absolutely nothing standing. And can you tell us uh, what year was that? 45. Uh, uh, it was September of 45. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, no, was it? Or maybe the month before. So well, this was around or just after the surrender? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, because mm -hmm. we were brought in the occupational troops. The mm -hmm. war was over. The war was, it was it's September 1st, the war got over. You know, there's another thing that very few, few people remember. September 1st is when Poland, when, when Hitler went into Poland. Mm -hmm. And it was September 1st when the Second World War was officially over in that, 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 that to a six years to, to almost to the day. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people don't realize that, that, uh, that, that's, uh, that it was September to September, six years. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, when, when, when we brought them in, there was nothing there. I, I got on the trolley car, I took a little ride on the trolley car when I was uh, alone, mind you. How the hell did I know what they were going to do to me? You know, you don't know what these people were going to do to you. Mm -hmm. You know, there were, were, was uh, hate, a lot of hate. I had pictures. Gee, I don't know what I did with them. I don't know. Mm -hmm. What else? Wow. <laughs> oh, there's more. Okay. There's more, but I So can't. let's, uh, yeah, let's uh, get back a little bit to, for example, uh, earlier in 1945, do you remember in April when President Roosevelt died. Yes, we were, uh, we were, uh, 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 we were on our way, well, yes, we were on our way to, uh, to Okinawa. Mm -hmm. We were right around, uh, we were right, I think we were just passing Iwo Jima. We thought we were gonna have to bring in the troops that we picked up at uh, Zamboanga. Mm -hmm. We thought we were going to drop them off because they were having trouble at Iwo Jima. We thought we were going to drop them off there, but we took them right on into the invasion of, of Okinawa. Mm -hmm. And uh, and how about August 1945 with the A bomb? No, no, uh, no. Do I remember? don't. Uh, they told me that there there was a a big bomb, but. Uh, Mm -hmm. I don't even remember where I was at. I'd have to okay. look at my discharge. How about in May '45 when war was declared over in Europe, uh, VE Day? Well, that was another thing. They do, we heard that the, the guys in Europe didn't want to go to the Pacific because they figured they had fought their war and won, mm -hmm. and those in the Pacific were let them fight their own war. They were sick of it. Which mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, it was very, very boring. Uh, you get stuck on those islands. See, I had both the sea and the island duty. Mm -hmm. So I, I could understand the boredom uh, being a, a, on, uh, on uh, an island, stuck. Uh, mm -hmm. But Europe was altogether different. People there were, well, there were countries, they were civilized people. Not that they weren't, uh, you know, in the mm -hmm. islands they were mm -hmm. all, Jesus. Christ, you take all these islands, there were headhunters still, there was, uh, in New Guinea, there was uh, all kinds of, you know, there was different, different, they, these weren't uh, what you could say, 
uh, civilized human beings, if that's the right word. Mm -hmm. I don't even realize, you know, I don't even know if that's the realized, uh, that that's the right word. Right. But uh, these are, uh, uh, it was altogether different. And, and they said, you had your war and we got ours. Fortunately, it didn't last long enough. It, it, in fact, they tell me that some of the troops that were coming over, the war got over and they just turned the ship around and mm. brought them back. You know, that's, uh, mm -hmm. this is what I heard. I, that I can't confirm. Right. So you got to operate all sorts of equipment and stuff like that. I just wanted to ask you a couple of other basic questions. For example, uh, your clothing, was it adequate? Oh, sure. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. what, what clothing did we need? I had a pair of shorts, mm -hmm. underwear, and, and, and that was it. Mm -hmm. Unless the sh the, we had to go out to work when the ships were in. Mm -hmm. Then you had to go full dungarees and uh, a, mm -hmm. sheer, a shirt. And, but uh, when, when the fleet was out, we were on the islands, it was, uh, you just had your shoes, stockings, Underwear and a, a cut-off pair of jeans. End of it. Mm -hmm. you, you, oh, we had overhauled an engine. Mm -hmm. See, this stuff is coming back. Mm -hmm. And I said to the chief, Chief, you know, I said, if we're one tooth off on that engine, that's going to, with an updraft carburetor, that's going to shoot gas right across the distributor, and it's going to catch on fire. Mm -hmm. He says, the chief never, he, he wouldn't say hell or gosh damn it. Mm -hmm. He said, Patty, for goodness sakes, that was the harshest words he'd ever say, for goodness sakes. And I says, he said, if you feel that way, get a fire extinguisher and stand over there. Or, you know, get a fire extinguisher in case it does. So me, now the carburetor's like this. I stand here, about 10 or 15 feet away instead of here. Don't it backfire, gas goes over and it's through a ball of flame and I'm on fire from my stomach to my, under my chin with gasoline, all right? It's in, it's, in my, it's in my records there. I was in the hospital, base hospital. It's wow. in my records. And where was this again? In the, in the island of Ifari. Ifari. In the New Hampshire. Do you see South Pacific, the, the, the movie South Pacific? At times, yes. The, well, that's the island, Ifari. Mm -hmm. The island of Ifari is when they, where they filmed it, I believe. Mm -hmm. so, so I was in, they brought me to the hospital. While I was there, the first night I was there, now mind you, I'm all burnt. Mm -hmm. Don't I get a severe case of lice that they were eating me alive in mm. the bed, in the bed. And they, they put me in the shower, they put me in the shower, and they, you, you know the flag, a, a black flag they sprayed yeah. again? Mm -hmm. That's what they sprayed me with. On top of the, uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I thought I was going to die. Ooh. I thought I was going to die. But that was it. That was it. Aside from Quirk Henry the Flit, was it like first degree burn, second degree burn? I had first, second, and third, all three. Ouch. Yeah. And how long you, were you in the hospital again? Two weeks. Two weeks. And when I went back to the base, the day I went back, he put me back on the 12th to 4 watch. Oh, this is back to the mean lieutenant. <laughs> yep. Back to the base. Mm -hmm. Many times I dreamt of putting a bullet in the back of his head. Oh dear. <laughs> well, I would have done it if it was combat, if we mm -hmm. ever got in combat, but it was so bad, he was so... Mm -hmm. But uh, I, the only reason I'm telling you is I never did it, yeah. or I wouldn't be telling you. Mm. <laughs> but uh, what else? Okay, uh, I was, uh, earlier I was asking you about how you kept up with the war news. Uh, what about um, social? Did you what, get to see movies or no? No, that no was movies? another. That, well, what happened was the movie. The lieutenant says, uh, "Anybody drive a truck here?" Pascalupi jumped up and he says, "I saw Patty driving a truck on Numia, New Caledonia." Mm -hmm. He says, "All right, twice a week you go get a truck from the from the motor pool, and you take the guys to the movie twice a week." I says, "I got the twelve to four. He says, twice a week, you get the truck and you take them to the movies and you wait there and bring them back. That's when the, that's when the chief got me one day and he says, you see the cotton there? He says, you go lay down there anytime you want and I'll stand watch. I uh -huh. never did it. I never did it, yeah. but that was the reason. But uh, uh, that was the reason that, mm -hmm. uh, yes, I drove the truck for, for the length of time. He was, except what had happened was what had happened was the one, Bill come in one day 
and said, over the records, the mm -hmm. Victrola. He says, uh, I'm going to slap you around, Bill. This mm -hmm. kid used to go, he thought he was muscular, you know, right. he used uh -huh. to do all that. And he says, I'm going to slap you around. And I says, what are you talking about? He says, I'm going to slap you around. He says, I'm not going to hurt you, I'm just going to slap you around. I says, get away from me. I says, get out of my quarters. He says, now, do you want me to slap you around here or outside? Mm. So I says, hey, no sense making a mess in here. Come on, you want to fight? Let's go outside. I'm not going to fight you. He says, I just want to slap you around. So the guys all come around. And I says, OK, give me your best shot. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm going to slap you. I says, shut up and give me your best shot. You want to fight? I says, I'm going to show you how to fight. Of course. I knew exactly what he was going to do. He's a right-hander. He's going to throw with his right. I'm going to go under it, and I'm going to clobber him, which I did. I hit him out. Wow, I hurt the bugger. He's walking around in circles with his arms like this in circles. And Perry says to me, Jesus, Patty, don't hit him again. You'll kill him. He's defenseless. The chief come over. What's going on here? He says, Patty and Bill got into a fight. He says, why didn't you stop it? What's wrong with you? He, you know, they didn't realize we were there a year and a half or better. It's nothing to do, mm -hmm. you know, and attention was there. So he says, well, what's the matter with him? He says, Patty knocked him out. He's walking around. He's out on his feet. He doesn't know what's happening to him. So that, that episode went. Three weeks later, this, we had a Swede with us. God, he was a huge person, big, big guy. He got in back of me and he picked me up like this. And he had me straight out in the air like this. So, he says, you think you're tough? You want to fight me? <laughs> I says, I can't fight you, you're too big, you'll squash me. Mm -hmm. I said, I won't wrestle you, but I'll fight you, but put me down. He's got me this, he's shaking me. Who comes over to my rescue? The chief. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, put him down. What is wrong with you? Doesn't this guy, doesn't, no, he said, doesn't this sailor have enough problems with the lieutenant and you guys are picking him up, picking on him? He says, there isn't a one of you that he hasn't helped, not once, twice, three, many, many times, every single one of you. Why are you doing this to him? Then it started. Hey, chief, I like him. I do too, and it went all the way around mm -hmm. except one guy. Mm -hmm. The one, it, it, what broke it up, well, the one guy was uh, pulling the dispatcher. Him and the lieutenant had a thing going. They were, right. they, they had a, they were uh, gay or something, whatever. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he was the only one that uh, mm -hmm. didn't. And uh, 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 what broke it up was uh, the the guy that I knocked out. He says, "Chief, I like him too. Look what happened to me." And everybody started to laugh, you know, and they, and they broke it up. And uh, that was, that was oh, what he did to me one time was, we got into a typhoon. Oh, I was in the typhoon off of uh, Okinawa, too. Oh, boy. Oh, I had after steering watch. I had after steering watch. That's as far back on the ship as you can go and as far down. Mm -hmm. And when we were hitting, we would be out of the water and we'd come slamming mm -hmm. down. That day I asked my mother in Italian to help me. And she did. We got out of it. But I was talking to her in Italian down mm -hmm. there all by myself. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, what else? These, these things all come to me. Mm. All right, so occupational troops in Japan. Uh, you, it's the end of the war, but you're actually in the Navy for two more years. Yes. According to your records. What yes. happened? The two, the, the, that was the third time I went to to, uh, to overseas into uh -huh. the South Pacific. We went to uh, we went to the island of Saipan, and there was three there were three barges, and we used to take three loads of ammunition a day out mm -hmm. and dump them in the ocean, which you could never never do today. Mm. We were cleaning up the mess that we made during the war. And this is back in '46. I'd have to see. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I would say, yeah, it okay. had to be 46. Uh -huh. And I, I think that trip was 13 months, that last, mm -hmm. uh, that last one. We went Guam, Saipan, and Tinian. Right. The three. And I also, I also, when I was at Saipan, 
Uh, I used to look over to when, they, when the Marines had invaded Saipan, the civilians were jumping off the cliff because they thought that the Americans were such beasts mm -hmm. and that they were going to hurt them and rape them and so forth, etc. And, the, and the, the, the women and children used to, they leaped off the cliff. I used to, I, you know, we used to go by that cliff. Wow. And I, I, every time we went there, yeah, I would uh, look over. You know, it was a, a historical thing now, you mm -hmm. know, that uh, that happened. And oh, that was another, and the, one of the times when we were leaving port, uh, we were going by that morning when we were leaving to go to the South Pacific with, on the Gerald. Uh, we were going under the Golden Gate Bridge, mm -hmm. and over on the right they called it Pelican Island, which is Alcatraz. Mm -hmm. the, the port was Alcatraz, it was Pelican Island. And I, I, I waved just in case <laughs> somebody in the, uh, someone in the uh, watchtower uh -huh. was saying, hey, there goes another ship into the South mm. Pacific. But uh, that's a small thing. All right, something else. Okay, so you're uh, back in 1946. You spent 13 months in Saipan, Guam, and Tinian. You're dumping ammo into the ocean. Three trips a day, three, three of Three trips us. a day. Yeah, three trips a day. Mm -hmm. We dumped, oh God, all kinds of, from BB guns to uh, name it. There wasn't a, 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 a ammunition that wasn't dumped into the ocean. Mm -hmm. from. 30 caliber to 16 inch. Mm -hmm. uh, and what was your rate at the time? Motor machinist mate first class. Okay, after 13 months of dumping ammo and what have you, what happened then? Come back to the States, mm -hmm. and I think that was about time for me to get out, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Were you on a point system, or was oh, it just the end? Yeah. When, when the, I was in the Navy, I had, uh, at that time, I had, uh, uh, see, you get two points for every month you were overseas. Mm -hmm. I'd been overseas 36 months. I had something like 70, 72 points. Mm -hmm. uh, you only needed 32 to get out. Mm. Yeah, I don't know, but I was, I was regular Navy, so I, I didn't oh, come okay. under the point system. And you left the Navy in 1948? Yes. Okay. What happened then? What happened? I went to television school. Really? Worst thing, worst thing I ever did, Jesus. What happened? Well, I went, I had about a month and a half to go. And in the process of doing it, Carmen Cyril, I don't know if you ever heard of him, but mm. uh, he owned a restaurant on Route 9, a uh, little restaurant, him and Laura, uh -huh. Laura Healy. And when television first came out, he says, Johnny, he says, you're going to school, what's a good television? I says, the best one to get is uh, K-Pot, K-Pot television. He says, how about getting me one? I did, he had nothing but trouble. I says, here's a friend of mine that's not gonna be a friend over a television and I'm going to get into the television business. No, mm -hmm. that was the end of it. I went back to being a mechanic. Back to being a mechanic. I we got a gas station. You know where Framingham, Hartford Street is? You know mm -hmm. where, you know where uh, the uh, George's gas station, the yeah. junkyard? Mm -hmm. the, he gets a junkyard now with him mm -hmm. there, George. Yeah. Well, anyway, in, uh, um, my brother-in-law, Dom, and I took it for 10 years. And when we first took it, we were paying $175 a month. Ten years later, they come in there and raised our rent to $875 a month. So we gave them back the station. When we first took it over, they were selling 8,000 gallons of gas a month. When Dom and I took it over, when we got through, we were selling 30, 33,000 gallons a month. That then is not like today. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, there was much more competition mm -hmm. in, in the game. And I bought, I bought the Marconi's, you know, in Marconi's on in Ashland. Yeah. The uh -huh. place across the street, uh -huh. the the that building there with all the cars there. Okay. Yeah. I bought that for forty thousand dollars off of Ray Alger, mm -hmm. and uh, I stayed there five years. Couldn't get along with my partner, so I quit, mm -hmm. and I went to work 
for, I, I, I had bought $8,000 into a vending machine business, and the guy wanted me to go to work there. Mm -hmm. Went to work for him and started out on a house, on a, 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 a chicken coop on 2nd Street. And uh, when I got through with them, six years later, we had built a brand new building, owned a house and a brand new building. And I went up to him and I says, I want to get out of this business. Mm -hmm. He was a lazy guy. He just didn't want to work. Oh, my God. Oh, so he says, okay. He says, what do you want? I says, look, give me my 8000 He says, okay. So he sold it. He sold it to the guy that was running the, uh, he was one of, one of those, um, helps people in Framingham. Uh, and, uh, oh, anyway, mm -hmm. uh, he called me in the office one day. Oh, first the guy come in, and I see him go into the, into the, uh, into the storeroom, mm -hmm. and he grabs a fistful of cigars. And I goes, hey, what are you doing? He says, why? He says, who are you? I said, me. I says, I'm John Patty. I says, who are you? And he gave me his name. I forget what it was. I says, what are you doing getting them cigars? He says, I bought out you. He says, I own part of this now. Mm -hmm. I says, oh. I says, you can take whatever you want. So Ellie called me into the office. She said, here, Johnny. She says, and there's an extra $500 in there for you. I says, Jesus. I go up there. I count the money. There's only $8,000. Hmm. And, and York, York call is over. He says, I couldn't afford to give you the 500 I says, oh, good for you. So two, 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 about a week later, I says, hey, York, I says, uh, I want a raise. I want $500 a week clear, or I'm quitting. He says, I can't afford to give it to you. I says, you can't afford not to. Here's my, here's my, I'm giving you two, what do you want? How much do you want? A, a month's notice? Two weeks' notice? A week's notice? You want me to go now? You name it. He says, two weeks is plenty. Okay. Mm -hmm. Two weeks I left. A year and a half later, he's out of business. Oof. Well, anyway, what yeah. else? Okay, uh, you, how, uh, when were you married? I got married. I was 30 years old. Mm -hmm. So, 23, what's that? 1958, mm -hmm. was it? Yeah. And you, of course, had a son. One son. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'd be, he'd be uh, 60. He'd be 60 in October. Wow. John, is there anything else? Oh, Jesus. Okay, almost. Um, well, after, uh, did you join any service organizations? No. No. Okay. Uh, the Italian Vets. No. Well, yes, yes, I did. The, the Italian, Italian Vets. vets. Okay. Italian. On South Street. That new building. That's South. when. That's then. Yeah. Okay. And any reunions with your old outfit? No. No? No. Okay. How important to you was serving in the military? How what? How important was it for you to serve in the military? You know, I never give it that. I didn't, you know, it's not like today. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, they exaggerate. Uh, there were so many of us in the service, 14, uh, 14 or 15 million. Mm -hmm. Everybody was in the service. They don't say thank you. They the first time I heard anybody, I was coming, I was... Coming home from North Carolina, golfing, mm -hmm. and they got talking about the service. I said, and the guy in front of me says, thank you for all you did. Uh, you were Second World War? And I says, yeah. He says, thank you for all you did. That's the first time I ever found out that people appreciated that we, were, that we did uh -huh. Second World War. And now I hear it a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I hear it a lot. Thank you. Thank you for what you did. Of course, there's not that many of us now. We're, right. we're dying at a thousand a day, I understand. Mm -hmm. See, what the hell? They're all 90 and better, right. those that were actually in the war. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was that. Mm -hmm. John, is there anything else you'd like to say? No. Okay. I think that's enough. There's, there's, <laughs> but it was, there's a lot of uh, interesting, mm -hmm. there was a lot of interesting things that happened. Probably more that I just I can't remember right mm -hmm. now, but... A lot of things. Yeah. Well, John Patty, thank you so much okay. for taking part in the Native Veterans Oral right. History Project. Right, right. Okay. Uh,